Okay, now it should work. Let's see. Boom! Yeah! This is how you change a starter in a Case 5130 or a Cummins 59. This, I know some of the Cummins configurations are a little bit different, but yeah, this is the old school Cummins 59 um, OG model. But anyways, to get back to the point, here's where the starter is. And a lot of times when you can turn the key and nothing happens, but you can come down and you can jump it, there's a wire inside of there that comes down off this white wire uh, that's inside of this solenoid that goes bad. Uh, it, a lot of times that's from sitting there and cranking on it too hard, just too long, it just fries, fries the cross wires inside of here. And, or there's another, if you can look down here, I'll get you guys back here. There's another, hold on. There's this, this uh, terminal can get melted on the inside of there too. Let's go ahead and swap this starter out. It's pretty easy. You need a straight screwdriver, an eight metric, a 17 metric, and a 17 metric socket. If you have these, you can swap out these starters pretty darn quick. So let's get at it here. Another thing I like to do before I start taking these things apart too much is always take a picture of them so you know how they go back together. Because you get all these wires apart and sometimes it can be kind of tricky. Right there. Be sure to save these bolts and lock washers because a lot of times when you get a new starter, they don't send you the old ones. A little trick to doing that. It's like that. Okay, so now that we got that top one off, should be good as far as electrical unhooking stuff goes. You don't need to unhook the bottom one because it just goes from here to here. So that all comes out in one piece unless you're replacing the solenoid. But uh, yeah, so now we just have these guys to get off. So you need a 17 and an eight. Down here's the eight Allen. But I like to do this one last because it kind of keeps everything in there tight and that's the easiest one to take out. So do that one last. Sometimes you might need like a crow's foot or an actual wrench to get that thing started back there, but socket makes this a lot easier. And then uh, you can't take the socket all the way out, but you can take it most of the way out and then just finish it with your fingers because there's not enough room for your socket to back all the way out. There's one. I would advise using a long Allen with the rounded head tips to get this one out. Granted, I'm seeing that and not using one. There's a good reason behind that because I don't have one. Now the 17 old fashioned style. Just like that. Pops right out of there. Now with the old. This starter, I've replaced this solenoid on this starter before and it happened again, so I just got a whole new starter. It's about the same price anymore. Yeah, there's my terminal there. This one stays on, this one can come off, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one now while it's out. One less thing to do in there. Now it's simple as putting it in there. I just like to take a little look-see. Looks good. It's a flywheel on the back of the motor. So yeah, let's just go ahead and pop this old one back in. It's simple as just plopping this new one back in. Try not to drop these. They are kind of heavy. like a glove. Now put them in backwards. This one's always the first one I put on. These holes are in there nice and snug. I really like these 5.9 12 valve Cummins motors. They're easy to work on. So tighten them up to about pretty tight specifications okay 
This this white wire is coming from your ignition. Here's your ignition spot right there. And we'll hook up our white terminal wire that goes to the ignition or the key. This one you want to be kind of careful with because there's some screws that can kind of come out on you if you're not careful. Okay, that should be good there. Now we just got to hook our terminals back up. Now if everything's right, you should hear a click. Can you hear that? That's good, that's going into the ignition. If you didn't hear a click, something would probably be wrong up in the key. Okay, keep your fingers crossed. We'll see if this puppy starts. Now it should click on if everything's right. We got our lights going here, blinking at us. Okay, everybody, come on, moment of truth, moment of truth. Oh, God dang it. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Okay, now it should work. Let's see. Boom, yeah. Fixed it. So that is how you swap a starter on a Cummins 5.9 or a Case 5130 tractor, like a 95-ish model. Yep, easy peasy. Don't be afraid to get in there and do it. Save lots of money. I think that starter costs 350 bucks, which stinks, but hey, my tractor starts, so that's cool.